a little bit of reflection. You did mention you've been in the industry for 10 years. You've been <laughs> in fast for oh, six, seven uh, years <laughs> already. So maybe you can share for our founders out there. It's certainly compared to previous years, a lot more challenging now, especially in the capital market. Maybe even a lot more challenging in terms of monetization, trying to get people to pay for things, especially for, for SaaS or B2B maybe. So definitely all around lots. There are challenges already, but it's even more challenging with the macro. But maybe you can provide some context and some, some inspiration maybe with uh, <laughs> some, some, from some of the war stories that you've gone through. Since we're on a turn on stable coin, we don't think StraightX is super successful right now, but it came a long way. But I, I would be the first one to tell you guys that there are multiple discussions over the last five to 10 years that we should abandon this project, right? And we did the company itself. The, there are multiple make or break moments that have happened over the last you know, five years, right? And that was a moment multiple times in the company deciding that, is this something that we should be building? Uh, are we too early? Are, are we trying to do something that's too innovative or too forefronting that potentially might kill us? And every single time, I, I think the team huddles back down right, and discuss what do we believe in? Do you have conviction that this is going to be working out? And that's where I went back to the first thing I was talking about earlier on about being perseverant and being patient. Mm -hmm. If you believe in something and you want to do something, you must know that there's going to be a lot of struggle along the way. And I, I know times are bad. Okay? The times are very bad right now from a fundraising perspective, right? Market is not the best situation. That's where the, the best entrepreneurs will survive, right? And the best company will survive. This is where you need to really get your back against the wall, innovate, and think about whether this is truly something that you want to do, convince your team. And a lot of time, it's really, as the company grows bigger and bigger, 90% of the problems is not technology. The people <laughs> side of the problem is really the problem. And we need to make sure that you can align your people and deal with the people. That is actually the number one reason most early state startup fails, right? And making sure your guys are sticking together, making sure that everyone will believe in the vision that can be aligned and working on a common goal and keep going at it, right? It, you only fail when you give up. And if you can continue pushing the team, hopefully one day you, you will see the sunlight and things will get, get through. Definitely a, a lot to think about for our founders in the audience and certainly hard-earned, more experiences, make or break moments as, as you've come to this point. And, but again, the, the story is not over, right? So <laughs> there's still a lot. No, of <laughs> we're not done yet. And, and we'll probably <laughs> just open the door and there's more work there. The only easy day is supposed to be yesterday, right? So that is the trade-off of innovation. Part five, Insignia and Faz. And I also wanted to talk about our Faz's relationship with Insignia as well. You on a personal basis have been, you were an early supporter of, of PayFaz even before the whole merger. And then Insignia has also been an earlier early supporter of PayFaz and then supported as well as, as the Faz group came together. Maybe you can share a little bit from your perspective how that relationship investor, founder investor relationship has evolved with Faz and maybe even contributed to Faz's maturity as a company today. We always call the boss England. <laughs> his, his first and foremost is energy level and it's, it's impossible to, to catch up with. And it has been a great inspiration. I think he has been doing this for so many different years. And uh, Hendra and I have personally seen his capability to juggle so many different things as, as a super networker, super connected, and build deep relationship over there. Multiple times during our Douglas moment, we always had to think and have a chat with England and he can tell you how he can get things done. Or he will throw his backing around you to make things happen, right? I think for us, the last 10 years probably will not be possible along multiple occasions without uh, Insignia and England's continuous support, right? And when things get tough, this is where, where really the rubber meets the road. The true matter of people is being tested. I think getting uh, investors, times are different, right? I, I think mm. uh, one time back where there was a saying that when interest rate environment was very low, you can have an idea and a story, you can fundraise, you have so many different choices. But one of the advice that I got from one of my mentors then is that you really need to get investors that will stick it through with you, right? Because they might give you the best valuation, but you, you shouldn't be optimizing for that. You need to optimize for uh, uh, investors that have the know-how and the ability to help you because you're going to need help right, when things go wrong, right? And finding that connection, and it doesn't work for, it's a hit and miss, right? And it, it, there, there is no so-called thing that people always say is that, yeah, this investor is great, that investor is bad. I don't believe in that. I think it's about the connection. Sometimes this investor is great to six guys, but bad to four guys, right? It's like a racial kind of game. You need to find investors that you can have a connection with, that you can tell the truth about, and you can have that conversation. And we were really appreciative that over the years, that that's what we managed to achieve with Insignia and, and the folks that we work over there, and of course, it's in Boston Land, how to make sure that you have that hard conversation 
to basically be frank and, and think where we, we feel both safe to be able to have that kind of conversation to think about what's the best thing to do for the company at that moment. Yeah, again, going back to that whole importance of trust and being able to have yeah. logs, not just with regulators, even with your investors, with your employees as well. So def definitely important, a lot more important than the technology one might argue. <laughs> as <you Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'm sad about that, by the way, but yeah, like, yes, it, it is true. Yes. Right.